it's uh, very clear, number one, that there has definitely been an affirmative contribution to influence of Tesla's lights. Uh, so that is supportive, supportive from chakra state uh, for alignment of all chakras, supportive uh, from the energetic uh, flow of information in the diagram that we saw through all the organ systems, thereby also enhancing the capacity of left right brain to, uh, to come to align to a field of mutual coherence. That is at least the attribute of the data we observed. And third, the energy field. In, uh, from the parasympathetic and the sympathetic field, we saw that areas that showed depletion, they were strengthened. So overall, there was affirmative outcome that we observed from the data that we captured. Now, as far as the water, we see that about uh, 25 minutes or so after the uh, uh, Tesla, Tesla coil was stopped, we gather data on the water. And of course, the water already has a quite a strong baseline. But what we saw was that the, uh, uh, the collective uh, uh, process of the water retaining the level of increased biophoton exchange within mm -hmm. also is enhanced. And thereby, we can also see that the sharper edges that the water has also began to get smoothened. So now we are going to have a lovely moment where I'm going to remove the, uh, the uh, syringe. And Aaron and myself, we are going to share the photon-induced water. So thank you. From your knowledge from using this, knowing that we're made mostly of water, mm -hmm. and we're going to drink this water, what happens then? What's your what's your hunch? Now, that the question you asked does not uh, uh, does not render itself to a answer that can be kept inside a finite field, because we this is a preliminary read. When ultimately we induce this water so that we drink the water, and then we are able to observe the characteristic that the water in turn how it supports the complete energy field of the system. We know, I mean, there are studies done in a recent documentary that was released here in the United States based upon a water conference in Moscow from years ago. I may have told you about it. So from this conference, it showed that when we look at structure, we speak of intelligence in the water. And the intelligence in the water is the capacity of the water to retain information of its environment, retain information that is uh, induced to the water as prayer. We've seen dear uh, Masa, Dr. Masaru Emoto-san has really paved the way for a broader outreach to enhance the global, um, let us say, consciousness project to recognize we are water, our thoughts influence the water within us. Now, we are dealing with some strong factors. We are dealing with certain levels of wave frequencies from the Tesla, from the Tesla lights. So then how the, how the water, the retention of the information drunk by people, how does that also support the energy field? So what we are looking at is some longer process of application to which to really look at it from a deeper level, let's say a clinical, a clinician, a researcher, a practitioner can follow a group of people as a, as a pilot study to induce water like this in a 10 minute cycle. Water where you have a baseline and then you do a baseline of the person or the subjects who are, who are participating in the study. Have them drink this much water. And by drinking this much water, 20 minutes later, again, calibrate and look at the data. And we've done uh, lots of studies like this with uh, uh, structured waters that we will call now intelligent waters. And we've seen uh, very uh, affirmative outcomes, especially when it comes to the um, organization of the hemispheres in the brain, organization of the capacity of uh, the sympathetic, parasympathetic fields to uh, um, be to be propelled 
in, in, a, in a manner that is very conducive, thereby minimizing the level of uh, inertia or the level of resistance, because now the flow inside the field, the energy field, will uh, have less um, impedance to it. So these are, all, these are all favorable attributes to explore. And if we see that it does support the uh, human energy field, and we are predominantly water, so if we do are able to do this with water, then we can address some uh, greater questions to life. Can this water in turn be, uh, how, how will it provide in irrigation? Uh, how will it, uh, what will be the outcome in the growth of plants? Mm. Uh, because ultimately we are dealing with the energies of cosmos. These are cosmic energies. Uh, they are prevalent in the bandwidth of electromagnetic fields that we know. Mm. Uh, so when these harmonics, these, these uh, informational exchanges are uh, enhanced, can it then ultimately bring together a global coherence, which is a global mind? Because if our uh, <clears throat> hemispheres are aligned, then coherent thinking is the outcome of a coherent mind, is it not? Mm. Homeostasis. Uh, then, then we become uh, creative, we become uh, extremely supportive for well-being, well-being of life, well-being of collective consciousness, not only in communities. Then we begin to see a community not isolated as a little village in a town, but rather a community as a global community. And hence the nature of our mind, which we have seen from multiple studies that were done from the 70s, that we, er we align ourselves to a global coherence which ultimately leads us to a cosmic awareness, which then brings us to a much broader field to our signifying the intelligence of the human being from the homo sapio state to the homo luminoso state. Hence, cells are awakened, cells are potentialized, and these are all now known factors in the study of epigenetics in the field of medicine. And such uh, breakthroughs in science are now being taught in various medical schools. So let us explore all these areas with affirmation, knowing that let us not be bound by any process or prince, but align ourselves so that we can clearly see how well-being can be enhanced for our global community in life. Thank you. Well, thank you.